Now, the president has long argued, and I'm going to be raising that with my panelists here, that the Chinese need us a hell of a lot more than we need them. Now, Charlie Gasparino and I have interviewed the president prior to his becoming president for decades, and that has been a key theme in, in the many chats uh, that we've had over those years. Uh, is he getting his way right now? Wall Street Journal editorial board member Mary O'Grady is here, conservative radio host Deneen Borelli, and last but not least, my buddy Charlie Gasparino. And that has been his premise, right, John? That they, they need us. They need us badly, and they are blinking here, are they? Um, we, yeah, maybe. But, you know, I, I don't know how much of a blink this is. I mean, how much does it move the needle? Does it, is, it, is it enough? Uh, you know, the markets are going to take this positively because anything that stops a real trade war, us putting tariffs on them, them putting tariffs on us, is a, net, is a very big positive for the markets because then what you have is tax cuts coming and and uh, and deregulation without the drag of a trade war right but you know it just it, but in terms of reality if they buy a few more semiconductors does that move the needle that Trump wants to and is that a hundred billion in the scheme of things you know uh, so so but having said that Denny, one of the things that's interesting to me when I'm doing research for this knowing you all you smart people are going to be here that I had to do my <laughs> part almost every major Western power uh, has some protections built in that disproportionately really gouge the United States. In China's case, 25% tariffs on, for example, automobiles. Um, so right from the get-go, we talk about his response being draconian, starts a trade war. But you can see his premise that they've, they've long started this trade war. We impose 2.5% on cars that come from abroad, China's included. So he does have some right to say what he says. But are you worried about where this is going? I'm not worried about it because, first of all, no one wants a trade war. But when you think about what President Trump says and how he says it, he usually goes broad. It's big. And then there's the overreaction, especially from the liberal media. And then he narrows his focus. And China is the focus. I mean, it, there are. But you know, you mentioned the liberal media. I talked to a lot of yeah. liberals who, who were surprised to hear. When I, when I just mentioned, what do you think of 25% tariffs on goods coming into your country? Right. Listen, I'm absolutely aghast at that. I'm opposed to that. China does that. Germany does that. Sure. France does a variation of that. Italy, my people, they do that. I was shocked. I almost wanted to disown it. <laughs> but it, it's common. It's, it's very common. But think about it. He's educating. You mentioned the media. He's educating hardworking Americans as well. I mean, who knew it was that bad with China, with the, with the tariffs and, and how they have unfair, uh, you know. But is this the proper response? To talk about tariffs? Yeah. Well, he's talking about them. So he talked about the exemptions with uh, Mexico and Canada. Uh, other countries wanted to come to the table, like Japan, just talking about it because they, you know, whoa, 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 what's going on here? So with China, yeah, they're, they're watching. This isn't business as usual. This isn't politics as usual with yeah. President Trump. And they get that now. So now they want to come to the table as well to hammer this out. And I think that was the plan all along, to get these countries to come to the table because it's been unfair on the U.S. end for way, too, for way too long. You know, it's like people who look at a loan deal that they have, right, and realize that the bank is gouging them, right, Mary? I mean, and, and then all of a sudden they say, gee, this guy with the world is labeled a nut, and he might very well still be a nut, uh, uh, but, but that they're saying, wait a minute, he does have a point. They well, are actually, stacking I the decks against us. Actually, I don't think he has a point. Yeah. I think I, I totally disagree. First of all, the, lib the benefits of trade liberalization go to the liberalizer. Okay, if there are 25% tariffs on things going into China, the people that are harmed by that are the Chinese. So for the well, president to say... But the Chinese say, are enjoying a huge surplus with the world. No, I'm no talking country about the, chi the surplus. Chinese people. And furthermore... Do you think the Chinese care? I should, the Chinese people, that they can't lay no, their hands on... No, but the Chinese on, government, if you're sitting on all this money and it's coming into you and you got this Look, surplus. Neil, the thing is the fact of the matter is trade deficits don't matter we sell things to them they take get dollars from that and what can they do with those dollars they can either wallpaper their rooms or they can send those dollars back here which, which is, is what, what they do yeah. now if the yeah. u.s government ends up taking that money and and becoming the hog at, at the trough that's our fault. We have to deal with that. But that money could come back here as investments, as more capital, and more capital makes yeah. American richer. And I'm also Americans worried richer. that we're fighting yesterday's war. I, and I disagree with, with all due respect, Deneen, because I love you. And I, I love you, too. I love your husband. <laughs> but people knew this China. People know, know what, what China's been doing for years. We, we try to get to their market. We cut deals with them so we can get access to their market, which we do sell a lot of stuff to. 
Uh, the other thing I worry about Well, is, you don't worry about it being an upside-down relationship. Well, we've been trying to change that, and because they we've do... We've been going nowhere fast. It gets bigger and bigger. I don't know bigger. about that. The, uh, the, uh, the, the agricultural industry would, and a lot of other industries oh, would disagree right. with you. We have, but the other thing I'm worried about is that we're fighting yesterday's war. And, again, our economy has adjusted, and some, there's been displacements, obviously. NAFTA created some displacements, but net-net, it's created more jobs. I mean, there's been displacements in the industrial Middle West, where we, in, or in Pennsylvania, for example, where, you know, steel doesn't produce a lot of jobs anymore. Okay, and yes, we're up against, you know, cheap steel being dumped by China. But here's one thing that you forget, that if, even if we created more steel jobs, that will come at the at the that, that will hurt other jobs right because there's going they're going to be paying more people the, the the car manufacturers are going to be paying more for steel it's going to hurt the manufacturers and, the, and exactly. the other thing neil steel is an incredibly automated industry but it's beyond steel right i mean i'm just talking the agreement i understand what you're saying there but i more agree with Denise. all I'm, right well, I'm and, I, and, and i'm just saying that that I, I think there is something where it says, now, I don't know if responding tit for tat is the answer. I think you raise a valid point there. But I will say this. When you look at our trade relationship, we are, we're, we can't fight fairly. And, and, and we're like a one-armed paper hanger going against these guys who already have a built-in advantage in their respective markets. If they're sending us cheap inputs and we're using those to become the most uh, competitive manufacturers in the world, that's a good thing, not but a bad not. thing. we're not. We're not becoming we are, the most competitive. We are competitive. And we're not now, to infinity. Not by the point. way, metal fabricators are already reporting that steel made in this country, their contract pricing has been up 35 percent. We had a report of that last last week. That's from a U.S. steel so manufacturer. So these steel guys who, so are, who are wanting to be protected, what do you say about they're them? Gonna, they're whining they're gonna, unnecessarily? They're going to gouge their customers, and they're already really? doing okay. it. But, okay. Neil, but here's the other thing with China. What about the intellectual property? That's a whole other do, story. Well, that's true. That's true. They well, let her finish that. Finish that that's, point. That's why we're this here. is going <laughs> to dismiss your point. Go ahead. But, yeah, but in regards to that, I mean, really, who knew it was to that magnitude? Uh, in order to do business in China, they need to know what your technology is, uh, your, your other trade secrets. You know, that's and unfair. American companies, including Apple, have been right. happy to share them. And there's and ways to, and there's ways to deal with that, but you don't have to go into the China shop and break everything on the shelf, which which is what he did by going after Mexico and Canada and the EU. Think about and all but he lightened up on but he lightened up on Canada. He lightened up on Canada, right? He, he, he announced exemptions way, for all of them, did, but why, with no concessions. By the way, which I'm just not defending his otherwise deep. crazy behavior. And my, his, <laughs> seriously, I mean, a lot of impulsively he does some. Really Really nutty things. But when I looked into this, and I'm not sure, to your point, Mary, that this is the right way to go about it, it is an uneven playing field. Now, I do see your point that, and I certainly see your point that as a manufacturing country, we can't be what we once were. And I don't know if but we'll we ever be get better, back there. Different. We, we can, can be, be different. better. But what I'd like to play out here is this sense that foreigners now are reassessing things and, and, and reassessing the type of trade packs they made. That, that has to be a Why did we good do NAFTA? Thing. We did NAFTA, and you, you're pretty much up on this. We didn't have to because we wanted to blunt Asia's, Asia's emergence and dominance in China, right? So what does he do? He, he basically goes after our trading partners in NAFTA. He <laughs> talks about getting rid of NAFTA, which NAFTA was the instrument to open up these markets so we wouldn't have to worry about these markets.